So the first story I want to tell you is of a scholar called Abd al-Rahman ibn Yahya al-Mu'allimi. Abd al-Rahman ibn Yahya al-Mu'allimi was uh, a scholar of the previous century. Uh, some would even argue he was the most knowledgeable man of the previous century. I know some of you are thinking, I've, I've never heard of him. Um, but the, the, the people who, who, for, who are students of knowledge and the people of knowledge, they've definitely heard of him. And, um, you know, you know, people usually say Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin al was the Sheikh al-Islam of the previous, of the previous uh, generation, of the previous century. Um, but Abdul Rahman bin Yahya al-Mu'allimi, uh, some would argue, you know, he was actually more knowledgeable. And I remember speaking to one of my teachers and uh, I was shocked when he said to me, uh, Abdul Rahman, Sheikh Abdul Rahman al-Mu'allimi is more knowledgeable than, than uh, Sheikh Muhammad al-Amin. Uh, I remember I was, I was quite shocked. Uh, I'm not in any position to compare, but uh, the people of knowledge, I mean, they, they obviously they've reached that level, so they can they they can compare. Um, but it's just you know you always hear about Sheikh Muhammad Al Amin, so I was just shocked. I, was, Sheikh I mean, I, I I've heard great things about the Sheikh. You know, I've I've got his works. I've had a look at them. Uh, um, I've not studied his works, but I've had a look at them. Amazing, amazing, amazing. He's definitely out there. I didn't know, you know, that, that took me by surprise. Most knowledgeable of the whole previous century. And I remember then, um, my sheikh, he said something to me. He said, name me one science that Sheikh Muhammad al-Amin al shanqiti has, one subject within Islamic knowledge that he had expertise of and he had grounded above Abd al-Rahman al-Mu'allimi. I said, Sheikh, I'm not in any position to say he said that there's there's nothing that Sheikh Muhammad Al Amin Al Shanqiti has that Al Muallim doesn't have. He didn't top him on anything. He said Nahu. He's got he's got Al Muallim has got ijtihadat in in, in Arabic grammar. And, you know t uh, he's got tafsir and of course Sheikh Muhammad Al Amin wrote a whole tafsir. But even though Sheikh Muallim didn't write a tafsir, but you know you could see his, his knowledge of tafsir is there. But he said there's one subject that Al Muallim has that actually. No one of the previous century had, and that's al rijal the science of men in hadith. He said that's something that al muallimi topped everyone. I said had the Sheikh al-Bani, and the opinion of the Sheikh is he said even Sheikh al-Bani with his makana and his level and his station. He said this specific part. Remember, the science of hadith is broken up into many sciences. But this specific part of science of hadith, al muallim had it. So I'm digressing. The point I'm making is that he is an extremely knowledgeable uh, man. What was he like when he was alive, though? Was he teaching in a big seat in uh, a masjid somewhere? Were the students of knowledge flocking around the world uh, to visit him? No, um, he actually was um, He was a librarian um, He worked in a library um, He's actually from Yemen He spent about 30 years in India Where he worked in a library in India And uh, then he spent uh, The latter part of his life In Mecca In the library um, The library in Mecca The Haram library And um, he spent his days just writing, writing, writing And He's got some works today that are foundational books in certain areas of the religion. One of those such books, as he's writing in there, he's, he's so unknown. He knows himself that he's so unknown. He writes in there, I don't even know who's going to publish my book. <laughs> he's, as he's writing, he's saying, and, and this book of mine, I don't even know who is going to publish it for me. I don't even know if he's going to make it to print He lived and he died And when he died Just papers Just papers were piled up In the library Just papers Decades Decades later Close to half a century Later Scholars started to discover his works Started to spread Slowly things started to get published here and there Until they found all of his works And he was He didn't even know 
if one of his books would be published, that Allah has made it such that his entire set of authorship was published in a massive publication. I have it right here in front of me. 25 volumes. 25 volumes published by one of the most established publishing houses as well. Darul Alam Fawaid. Darul Alam Wal Fawaid. And when it was released, students of knowledge were going crazy for it. Sold out. Sold out. Very hard to find at the time. Do you think he knew that that was going to happen with his da'wah? When he was in the library just writing. But now his books are studied. Especially some of it as one such book. You're, you're probably going to start hearing about it a lot inshallah ta'ala. But it's a book on ibadah he wrote. It's called Raf al-Ishtiba. Wallahi. Shocking. Shocking. Shocking wallahi. I've not been through the book myself, but the benefits that some of I've that I've come across from the people of knowledge who mentioned to me, well, I I'm amazed, and I know one. But seeing them, the scholars amazed. It's truly a work to be benefited from, inshallah ta'ala. What do people know about Abdurrahman ibn Yahya al Muallimi? Mm. That's uh, um, Abdul Hakim's favorite. I think even Ustad Abdurrahman. This is a scholar that I know you respect very much, Abdul Rahman al Muallimi. Abdul Rahman al Muallimi is one of the most highly respected people to me after Sheikh Ulisam ibn Taymiyyah from the Mutakhirin. I truly love him. I don't know if it's Abdul Hakim's favorite, but I'm like. He mentions him a lot as in the book. Yeah. Uh, you, know, like, you, know what, you, you know what it is? I actually spoke to Abdul Hakim about this. You know, I was like, you know, are there many, many explanations of the works uh, from in Arabic? Because I know there's Somali explanations of a lot of Sheikh. Abdul Rahman Yahya al book works and there's not many in Arabic and he said that's because the Somali scholars actually uh, f- discovered his books and popularized not discovered they, they they kind of became very familiarized with his books a lot earlier than the Arabs did and that's why even his Araf uh, al-Ishtiba uh, Sheikh Uthman or something like that in Zemeka Uthman Uthman Ahmed Mahmoud Uthman Uthman um I forgot his name. I, I, you I, know what I'm talking about, yeah, though, right? Yeah. He was the one who had the, the manuscript for Rafa Ishtiba. Oh. Like, Somali scholars really worked so in Somali language, the explanation of his works. But the point is that, you know what's interesting about him, yeah? There's one thing that Mu'allimi had that no one in his entire era had mm. mastery of, and that was Ibn Rijal. What made him famous for that subject was a book that he wrote called At Tankil, which is a refutation on Muhammad Zahid al Kothri. Muhammad Zahid al Kothri was a mutasib of the Hanafi madhab. Would you like to explain what that means? So he was an extreme, like, extreme guy when it came to the Hanafi madhab. And he insulted 200 uh, imma of the Salaf to be able to defend Imam Abu Hanifa, even companions. I think it was Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu ta'ala, and he put them down to be able to put Imam Abu Hanifa. Mm-hmm. And this is not putting Abu Hanifa down, but yeah. Imam Abu Hanifa, just like Imam Ashafi and Malik and Ahmed, are prone to criticism, right? Mm-hmm. And they could make mistakes. But he was so for the madhab that mm-hmm. he would basically. Um, he would basically play around with the narrations. He played around with the narrations, right? And uh, what did he do? Uh, to try and uh, defend Sheikh, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa. Yeah. And, um, and he played around with the narrations to such an extent where, for he example... Reading, yeah. Let, huh? He reading. Yeah, don't worry. He played around with the... Uh, give this to Jimmy and tell him to answer it. Tell him to, yeah, tell him, t- tell him to call him, if anything. So he played around the narrations to such an extent that, for example, if there's a narrator called Sufyan... Mansour, for example, mm-hmm. Sufyan Mansour, and there's another narrator called Sufyan Mansour, who live at the same time, but they're two different men. One's called Sufyan Mansour Ahmed, one's called Sufyan Mansour Abbas. So he'd write Sufyan Mansour, and people would think it's the authentic one, but it's the weak one. Mm-hmm. So in the chain is the weak one, but he'll say it's the authentic one. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So he'll play around narration. So you have to go a level above to be able to yeah. work it. And there are people living at the same time. So he found so Muhammad Zahid Kothri. Bro, oh, bro, no. Muhammad yeah. Zahid Kothri actually Sheikh Al Bani said he really knew. <laughs> he really knew hadith himself because to be able to play around with the narrations like that you have to know yeah. so he would find men living at the same time same place who might have met or maybe even did meet and they had similar names mm. people would say wow what's happened here yeah 
عبد الرحمن يحل مع لي لا 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 وان سيكند ليتس جو اب ليتس كلين ذس اب ناو يا يا ليتس جو بي دي كلين ذا اب كلين ذا اب رحم الله تعالى سو بيبل ار لايك واو ان ذس ساينس ذات بيبل دونت ايفن ستدي ناو ديز بيكوز وات ذي ساي ذي ساي اتس وات ذس دون يا اتس فينيش يا نا نا سو هي هاد ذات that what even people to today, today don't have so mm. so that's why he, he basically did some big investigation then yeah. i can imagine like and i tell you something about about him you know like like his his uh risalat al bid'ah haqiqat al bid'ah reality bid'ah well it's a beautiful book he's got even a summary of it explaining what bid'ah is at the beginning of the kitab he says uh, you know sadd uh, sadd uh, sadd dujna uh, explaining uh, you know unveiling the uh, the ambiguity with regards to what bid'ah is you know a lot of people have shubhat with regards to bid'ah and what it is and play around with it bid'ah hasan and da so he wrote a kitab defining what bid'ah is and he said you know there are books that are written like Imam Shatibi's kitab al itasama very big books and they're very hard for a small student to understand so he wrote he broke bid'ah down in a way that people hadn't done it prior to him in a very simplified way and you know i remember i was going through in ramadan you know his uh, fiqh section He had a kitab. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah. He, he had a kitab on uh, uh, authenticating the hadith about the six days of Shawwal. Yeah? And I thought to myself, nah, I don't think it's beneficial for me to read. So let me just put it away. Because I wanted to see in Ramadan yeah. what he had Ramadan related so I could yeah. read it, right? Yeah, yeah of course. So, yeah, so he had this small risala on the issue of, you know, some people, they try to say that the hadith about the six days of Shawwal, fasting and six days of Shawwal is weak. Hadith is Sahih Muslim, by the way. Yeah. So he's just trying to show how it's authentic and da da yeah. He even brings the aqwal of Imam Malik that's taken out of context. And yeah. So I thought to myself, this is not relevant. Like, I, yeah. I, thought, I, thought, I thought to myself, what stupid guy in mm. his time decided to go against the six days of Shawwal issue? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, maybe it was something just relevant to his time and he, yeah. quote, he wrote a refutation, but it's been captured in history for yeah, us. Course, Does that yeah. make sense? So I thought maybe his book's not even beneficial to us. So as Shawwal came, I remember Sa'ad sent me a fatwa, you can beat the guy's name up because I don't want to make him famous, but Akram Nadwi, he wrote a little article on what? How the six days of Shawwal is what? It's not. It's not authentic. And he's attacking Sahih Muslim. Ooh. And you know why they do it? I clocked why they did it is because they tried to attack Sahih Hain. So they're trying to show Because you know there's a few hadith on Sahih that some of the scholars question, but then ultimately they were wrong. Imam Muslim yeah. and Bukhari were right, and no yeah. and Ibn Hajj defended them, and many of the ulama, mm. you know, Imam Dar Qutni and whatnot. And whatever they brought, and what they brought was the best criticism of Bukhari Muslim. No one brought any criticism better than what they brought, but yeah. even their criticism was not up to scratch. Incorrect. Imam Nawi yeah. Ibn Hajar responded to it and showed that no, that Bukhari Muslim had the upper hand here. Mm-hmm. So some of those narrations they tried to revive them in it, and one of them was the narration on the issue of what. The six days six of Shawwal. Yeah. So then I was like, one second, wait, wait, why did you wrote about this? So yeah, I went huh. back to the bookshop, I picked up the book, and I thought, you know what, let me refute this, let me put it out there. It's beneficial for the yeah. people because it was starting to spread. But then I thought to myself, you know what, well, like, just, that's wrong to make it. I just read it for my own benefit. Mm. Just, mm. It was just so nice, my life. But I leave you, man.